God, we are in awe of the many ways you reveal your gifts. We thank you, God, for the many gifts of this season, the gifts that call us to what matters and what's essential. And we thank you, God, that you sent Jesus to let us know that we are worthy of your coming, that we too are gifts. Thank you, God, for the ways that you weave together people and places and thoughts and songs and events. We are in awe of you. Amen. The story of Jesus is a story that also has the Holy Spirit very much involved. We oftentimes associate the Holy Spirit with Pentecost, and that's a good thing. And the Holy Spirit is also very closely connected to the story of Christmas. In our scripture today, we see that the Holy Spirit plays an important role in the early life of Jesus. Jesus and his family were deeply, deeply rooted in the Jewish faith. And part of that tradition included a naming day on the eighth day, a Jewish blessing ceremony. The way the Holy Spirit works on the day of Jesus' naming ceremony is of great importance. In verses 25 through 28 of the scriptures, so beautifully read by Donald Birch III, we see the Holy Spirit working through Simeon to be a part of this amazing story where Jesus is lifted and blessed. The Holy Spirit in this scripture works in, in three ways. We see that Simeon was filled with the Spirit. We also see that the Holy Spirit offered revelation to Simeon. And we also see that Simeon is prompted by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a gift, and in these few short verses, we see the Holy Spirit filling and revealing and prompting. There are so many expressions of the Holy Spirit in so many ways that the Holy Spirit works. We want to look at that a little more deeply, a little more fully. And so we have this video on the gift of the Holy Spirit from our own Del Madian Baskerville. Hello, church. My name is Del Madian Baskerville, and I'd like to share some thoughts on the Holy Spirit as a gift. So, what is the Holy Spirit? Well, it is the way the biblical authors talk about God's presence. The Hebrew word for Holy Spirit is Ruach. Ruach can refer to a number of different things, but what they have in common is energy. Here's the Hebrew word and the Hebrew spelling, Ruach. Ruach, the Holy Spirit, is an invisible energy and moves an energy that moves like the clouds and make the trees sway. Just as you see in this picture, the trees are swaying, the clouds are moving, yet you don't really see it, you feel it. Take a breath, big one, in right now. Breathe out. You feel this breath, but do you see it? That's the way the Holy Spirit works. This energy and vitality is also known as Ruach. Ruach is the same word used in the Bible to describe God's personal presence. Just like wind and breath is invisible, God's spirit is invisible. Wind is the powerful and it, wind is powerful and so is God's spirit is powerful. And so just as the breath keeps us alive, God's spirit sustains all life. During this Advent season, we are reminded of what the Holy Spirit is and what the Holy Spirit does in our lives. Here are a few things the Holy Spirit does. Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. The Holy Spirit regenerates us. The Holy Spirit reveals Christ to us. And in us. The Holy Spirit leads us, the Holy Spirit empowers us, 
The Holy Spirit fills us. The Holy Spirit teaches us to pray. The Holy Spirit brings liberty and the Holy Spirit transforms us into the image of Christ. And just a few more, but not least, the Holy Spirit enables us to wait. The Holy Spirit strengthens our spirit. The Holy Spirit pours out God's love into our hearts. The Holy Spirit bears witness to the truth in our conscience. The Holy Spirit teaches us. The Holy Spirit gives us joy and the Holy Spirit comforts us. During this Advent season, remember, the Holy Spirit unites us to Jesus Christ in his body. He reveals Christ to us, giving us life and makes Christ alive in us. The Holy Spirit takes the experience of Jesus and he incarnates his ministry, crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension, and brings them into our own experience. Because of the Holy Spirit, the history of Jesus Christ becomes our story and our experience. All things and more make the Holy Spirit truly a gift. Have a blessed Advent season. We are in awe of the gift of the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit worked so closely in the life and ministry of Jesus, including on his day of naming. Mary and Joseph are also standing in awe. They're marveling at how the blessing of their child unfolds as they continue to hold in tension the dramatic experiences that they are trying to understand. Simeon, again being prompted by the Spirit, notices that the parents also need a blessing, and so he ministers to them. Simeon knows they'll need wisdom and strength for the many unknowns of their new life together. This story gives us much to think about on this final Sunday of 2020. Mary and Joseph needed a true blessing from God, and they also needed the presence of the Holy Spirit to guide them into the unknowns that were ahead of them. Looking at the end of this year and the beginning of next year, we too need this presence of the Holy Spirit to be with us, to guide us, to show us, to teach us, to lead us. One of the gifts we carry into this new year is the gift of the Holy Spirit. Mary and Joseph also needed the gift of awe, the gift of wonderment. The ability to look at ordinary things and see that God has touched those ordinary things. The God who comes to them when they need God the most. We too need the gift of wonderment to look and know that God is at work. Like us, there's much they did not understand. And yet they had a growing sense of trust. We too are learning to trust that God is with us in our experiences. Even in the midst of pandemics, we are learning that the blessing we seek is ours. Our God will come to us in the midnight hour. Our God will awaken us for each new day. Our God may not show us the entire picture just one step at a time, one breath at a time, one prayer at a time as we too are filled with the Spirit, as the Spirit reveals next steps, and as we're prompted what to do to serve and to love throughout these pandemics. The scripture also offers us direction for the fast approaching new year. In verses 39 through 40, the Gospel of Luke says, when Mary and Joseph had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of God, they returned to Galilee and their own town of Nazareth. The child grew in size and strength and was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was with him. Here is another gift that is revealed, the gift of strength. Like Jesus and his parents, we too need the gift of strength. Let's look more at what this gift is like through a video testimony by our own Clara Carter, the gift of strength. 
I am going to talk about the gift of strength, one of the many gifts that God gave me. In the past, there were times when I misused this beautiful gift upon the premise that some of my personal desires and goals were not acceptable according to my understanding of God's will. In those instances, I felt divided between what I wanted and questioned if God would grant them to me. I concluded that it was best not to pray for things unless I was seeking them in the spiritual realm. So, I attempted to obtain those things by a show of fierce determination and a sheer force of will. Doing this of my own strength proved futile to say the least. It required way too much effort and more than likely ended with mixed results. Strength has both physical and spiritual attributes. Physically, it allows me a wide range of mobility, standing, twisting, stretching, carrying things, walking, running, and other forms of activity. For me, spiritual strength magnifies itself through quietness, patience, tolerance, and steadfastness. It helps me to accept who I am in any given moment, to exercise courage even when I am quaking inside and want to run in the opposite direction. Strength helps me in meditation and reflections that embrace me with its silence and a calmness that refreshes my whole being. A place where inner peace abounds, regardless of chaos and disorder that's so widespread in the world today. Thank God who blesses me with strength to endure in periods of distress, the ability to deal with success and failure, and helps me release anxiety over things I cannot control or change, to be tolerant of my shortcomings and tolerant of others and their beliefs without resorting to thoughts or acts of resentment and hate. When I partner with God in my work and accomplishing goals, the gift of strength gives me the ability to remain steadfast in faith, to stay focused on God, who is my source of supply and endurance, regardless of challenges and obstacles that arise. My desire is to allow God's strength to work through me, so that I am the gift of strength that share with people in beneficial and loving ways. Thank you. We are in awe of the gift of strength, the way God supplies our every need in body, mind, and spirit. Sometimes we don't know where that strength is going to come from, and yet we know that God will provide, that God will move through the gift of the Spirit to help us rise up as our true selves and to rise up with strength. Let us open ourselves to the presence of the Holy Spirit. Like Jesus and his parents, we too will grow in strength. Like Jesus and his parents, the wisdom and the grace of God is with us. God gives us more grace when the burdens increase. God gives us strength to supply our every need. God will supply the strength we need for the many unknowns on the journey ahead. And so we open ourselves to the gift of awe as God supplies, Jesus teaches, and the Holy Spirit guides. Amen and amen.